Welcome to another Paleo Terra podcast. My name is Thomas Moore. If you have any questions about this podcast or any other Paleo Terra podcast, please visit www.paleoterra.com. Today's subject is actually spatially enabling a reference database. In a previous podcast, I made the argument why you would want something like that, but now let's actually look about look at how to actually do it. What I have in front of me right now is Firefox. You might be wondering why you use Firefox. Well, it turns out one of the best open source reference databases out there is a Firefox plugin called Zotero. This is what Zotero looks like. It's basically pretty much more or less the same sorts of things you see in other reference databases where you can have um, the same kinds of fields and tags for whatever it is you want to keep track of. Now each one of these papers have our geological papers where they actually spend some time out in the real world looking at real rocks. And so what I want to capture in all these papers is the actual areas in which they did their work. Now, unfortunately with Zotero, you can't create new fields. But the good news is you can create notes. Now, a note is just a piece of generally HTML text pretty straightforward. But the advantage of that is we can put as many notes in there as we want. We're not limited by a certain number of fields or a certain number of custom fields. We can just keep adding notes. Now if I want to record the spatial area of a reference, I can just add a note. So for example, for this Amazon paper, I've added a note with some spatial information on it. Now if you look, it's kind of a strange looking thing, but what it is is an OpenGIS designation for a polygon. And all I've done with this polygon is just create a rectangular polygon with the nor northern and the southern limits of their field area and the east and west limits. Now, I don't know if I have it up here. Yes, I do. I have a little program that I wrote that does this work for me, so all I have to do is go in and put in the northern, south, east, and west boundaries, and I copy the format, and I can just paste it right in. If there's enough interest in this sort of thing, I can probably make a JavaScript thing on the web where people can come in and just type in their values and get the same sorts of text out of it. But if there's, just let me know if you're interested in that. But anyway, you could actually use a wide variety of uh, information in here, but you are limited uh, in the end that you have to have the same spatial type in whatever database you're going to put it in at any one time. So there you go. So it's just a matter of putting these uh, polygon information in all these papers. As you can see, I don't have them for all my papers because, quite frankly, I don't have many of these anymore. And I didn't record it way back when, when I did this work in the mid-90s, which is unfortunate, but, you know, um, that's where we are and it gives me an idea of what I need to find in the future. So now that I got the spatial information in the database, how do I get it out and be able to map it? Unfortunately, um, there's no plugin right now for Zotero that can actually do that. There is a mapping plugin for Zotero, I don't remember the name of it, that will pull information out of your titles and whatnot in your reference and map those, but that doesn't really tell me what I need to know. So that's why I'm not using that. So if I want to export this, I need a script. And it turns out Zotero is extremely powerful in terms of scripting. Now what I've used for my scripting for Zotero is a uh, thing called Chickenfoot. It's a add-in you can download and install. And so it's just a JavaScript that I've written that will pull out various identifying information for the references, actual full text versions of the references, so it looks like it would be in a paper, uh, HTML versions, versions of that, um, digital object identifiers, and a few other odds and ends out of the database, including that note with the polygon information. So let me uh, select all of these. So I now selected all my references, so whether or not they have spatial data they'll export just fine. So I'm running the export, just quiet clicking on the arrow, and it should be done. Okay, now we're done with Firefox. Now what that did was it wrote this 
file Zotero export.txt. And that's what it looks like. It looks like a pretty nasty mess. But that's okay. We're not going to really look at this. This is a tab delimited dex file, um, which has an advantage in that I can now import that into an SQL based database just with um, some pre pre cooked SQL commands. So, what I'm going to do is I have a prefabbed SQL, uh, SQL file that will pull together that information and make, make it into a database that a GIS could read called tempsql spatial.sql. doesn't really matter, but I'm not going to get into details in the implement, implementation of this, but what it does is creates what's known as a spatial light database, which is an open source database that can be used in some mapping environments, and initialize it and then take that data out of the text file and stick it in a table and create the necessary information to be able to map um, the records. So I am going to create a new table, a spatial light, called demo2.sqlite it's a SQLite file. And I'm going to just create a temp SQL spatial SQL. That will read in the SQL and create the file. And that also will pull out the data out of the text file. That was all there was to it. So now what I need to do is bring up my map. Okay, this is North America, of course. And now I'm going to create a new connection because it's a new file. So demo2 is what I created, and connect to it, and see it has a polygon information field in it, I'm going to add, and there it is. So okay, now what can you do with that? Well, let's, let's clean it up to make it a little bit more useful. Let's make it transparent so we can see through it because you can see, you'll have references stacked on top of each other. Let's add a label so you can see what the source was, and boom. Now we have something useful. We can see the reference related in the middle related to the, the rectangles. We can see how they're distributed. We can, we can get an idea of where you have a lot of coverage, where you have a little bit of coverage. Or for example, these big broad papers are generally less specific than these papers that are very, very focused. Um, you can glean a lot about these um, papers just from the rectangles on the map. Um, in addition, you can use this information to, if you want to find all the papers within 100 miles of your location that you're interested in, uh, do all sorts of crazy things spatially with these kinds of data. And uh, just go zoom to full extent, you can see the full extent of everything, all the way to Antarctica where I've got data. Um, European coverage needs a bit of work because there's more papers that I have from that area, but these are the ones that actually I have uh, spatial data for. But it can give you an idea of where your coverage is good and where your coverage is poor. And give you an idea of what papers you, you should be looking at when you, whenever you look at this stuff. So anyway, this is a spatially enabled reference database. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, once again, contact me at www.paleoterra.com.